Okay, good evening. I will call this meeting to order, 632. Good evening to everybody. City Clerk Duarte, would you please take roll? Yes, Mayor, before I take roll, I would like to inform members of the audience that Council Members Alvarez, Ashton, and Trujillo are participating in this meeting via teleconference. Council Member Alvarez? Present. Council Member Ashton? Present. Council Member Trujillo? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Pacheco? Present. And Mayor Frometa? Present. I would like now to call on Pastor Jason Neville. He's a lead pastor for Praise Chapel Downey to lead us in the invocation of uh, tonight's council meeting. Uh, pastor Jason. Thank you. Uh, thank you. What an honor it is to be asked to do this. Thank you, uh, Mayor Claudia, and uh, an honor to open us up in a word of prayer. This great city I've lived in since the age of three years old. Let me pray. Can we, can we stand up first? Thank you. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just come before you this evening and we just want to first take time to just thank you for the breath in our lungs and for the opportunity we have to come together and uh, labor for this great city of ours, the city of Downey. I'd like to lift up, Lord God, our, our mayor, Claudia, and all those that serve our council, all those that are in leadership, Lord God, that we know that you have put in governing areas, Lord God, and so we like to pray for them for strength. I like to pray for guidance. I like to pray for direction, Lord God, godly direction for our city moving forward. Father, Lord God, we like to pray for our police department and those uh, in our fire department and those that are city officials all throughout our city. And we like to just ask that you would just have your way in this time, this gathering, this communication, this meeting, Lord God, that you would be present in everything that is said and done. For we are quick to give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. We really appreciate you joining us tonight uh, via Zoom. Thank, Thank you. you. Blessings to you and your congregation. Thank you. Uh, I would like now to ask our Madam Mayor Pro Tem Pacheco if you would please lead us in the flag salute. Yes. Uh, can we please face a flag? If you're watching us virtually, any flag, please place your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. At this time, I would like to make a couple of presentations. Uh, I know we have someone uh, already here to receive an award and I would like to call in uh, Mr. Hector Souza. We're not listening. Hold on. Thank you. 
and honorable in our community. My mask. Thank you, Hector. Okay. Um, thank you, Mayor Frometa, for this lovely award. This is really nice. I appreciate it. Um, thank you, City Council. I see your leadership. <clears throat> um, as Mayor Frometa mentioned, um, I did grow up in Downey. Uh, it's a pleasure to receive this award. It's a pleasure to serve in, in our community. Um, it's, uh, it's a very rewarding experience. I, I just started out as a volunteer coach and DJ when my son was in kindergarten. I was dragging him out of, out of bed at five years old to go play flag football. And, and that's how it started. It just, we ended up developing a, a, a very nice uh, winning team there. <laughs> and, um, you know, I got to tell you, I, I just learned over the years uh, how much of an impact we can have in volunteering our time, uh, especially with our youth. And um, I can tell you, uh, my time with DJA, West Downey Little League, um, Calvary Chapel, uh, Downey Pioneer Clubs, uh, Kiwanis, uh, my, my short stint as a uh, English literacy, literacy tutor for adults at Downey City Library have all been very rewarding. They've all led up to uh, me, uh, you know, taking the reins as president for Gangs Out of Downey, which I believe is a very, very vital organization in our community. We're doing a lot of good work and I'm looking forward to a lot of big things that we're gonna be doing in this critical time. I can tell you right now, um, coming off a challenging year, uh, I think it's very important. My plea to you, for uh, to everyone who's who's watching, is to get involved with our community. There's nothing more rewarding, and um, and more satisfying than volunteering your time for your community. And right now, we really need that. Uh, a lot of us have been uh, affected by this year, uh, whether it's financially or uh, through the loss of someone, or you know maybe we've known someone who's gone through something like that. So right now. It is a critical time for us to come together as a community. And um, again, it's a very satisfying, rewarding experience. So with that said, uh, God bless and, and thank you.
We have uh, another award. I don't know if uh, Dr. John Garcia is outside. Not yet. Okay, we will move forward with uh, the next presentation we have. I know he said he was uh, running a little bit behind schedule due to another meeting. Thank you. So, Kathy, would you come up? Madam Mayor, can, can we just take a, a, a second here? I think we're having an issue with um, some audio. So if we can just take a, a, a five minute break here. Yeah, you too. Oh. Testing. Testing. Yep. Testing, testing, testing. Just did. Testing. Testing, testing, testing.
Good evening, everyone. For those of you participating in our city council meeting via YouTube live stream, we are having issues with the audio on YouTube live stream. So we'd like to ask you to please join us via Zoom. Um, I am displaying the um, Zoom meeting ID and passcode at this time. Um, if you can please go to Zoom, enter meeting ID, Nine two nine nine eight three five five four zero seven, and the passcode is zero six nine four five two. Once again, meeting ID nine two nine nine eight three five five four zero seven. Passcode is zero six nine four six two or you can call one of the toll-free numbers at 1-877-853-5247 or 888-788-0099 and enter the same meeting ID and passcode. One thing we learned in 2020 is we pivot. We pivot, we adapt, and we adjust. So thank you everybody for your patience. Once again, for those of you that have just joined us on YouTube live stream, uh, we are having issues with the audio. Please join us uh, via Zoom. Meeting ID is 929-9835-5407. Passcode is 
452. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your flexibility. Technology, we have found, is a wonderful thing. And at the same time, it brings a whole new set of challenges. So for those of you uh, joining us via Zoom and those of you joining us via YouTube that you needed to switch over to Zoom, uh, we've given you a couple of minutes to be able to do that. Uh, it appears the sound on YouTube is uh, not coming through. So thank you for being patient and thank you for uh, helping us continue to, to pivot and adjust uh, our meeting. Uh, these definitely are challenging times. So thank you to our IT team and everybody for, for helping um, get, get us through this. Uh, I would like to right now call Dr. John Garcia. Dr. John Garcia uh, has been. Right here. <laughs> the, um, how about if you wait right here next to me? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Garcia. Uh, it is my pleasure um, to, to speak a little bit about you. May I? Please. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you for joining well, us, by the way. Yes, yes. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, Dr. John Garcia has been uh, Downey Unified Superintendent for nearly eight years. And Dr. Garcia, you grew up in Downey and you're a product of Downey schools, having attended uh, our Downey uh, schools and graduated from Downey High. So go Vikings. Uh, you're the only, the fourth uh, school superintendent that Downey has had. And you're, you're leading, Dr. Garcia is leading a district's uh, 1,000 teachers, uh, an additional 1,700 staff, and you're overseeing the education of about 20,000 students. Is that correct? Uh, that's very impressive, Dr. Garcia. Uh, you were selected, Dr. Garcia was selected as the superintendent of the year for Region 14 of the Association of California School Administrators in 2020. This was a very distinguished honor as Region 14 consists of 24 school districts covering an area from Beverly Hills to Long Beach. Each year, ACSA acknowledges outstanding performance and achievement by individual administrators in various regions throughout California. It is definitely uh, something that I, I wanted to recognize you, Dr. Garcia, because not only have you is is the legacy that you are leaving um, the students and the twenty thousand that that are um, under your guidance and direction. Uh, certainly, you have been involved with the Downey Foundation for Educational Opportunities uh, (DFEO) uh, over the last few years mm -hmm. since its inception, and the, uh, as an advisory board member, and this has been a key to the growth of the foundation, um, where we seek to uh, provide opportunities for every child uh, in the areas of music, art, art, sports, and college prep workshops. Um, one of the things that is really impressive uh, about Downey in, in Downey's district is that our graduation rate is 97%, uh, whereas the state's is 84%. And that is phenomenal. Um, I, when we talk about the unprecedented challenges that we have faced over this last year and, and the, the constant uh, pivoting that we've had to do, it, it is just amazing um, what our school district and our teachers and our students have, have had to do and have had to overcome and continue to overcome. And, and certainly um, it goes without saying that it takes strong, steady leadership to continue to provide that guidance. And um, I am very proud to be able to name you and, and provide this award that is the Mayor's Legacy Award to you because I truly believe you are doing such an exceptional uh, job in our community, guiding us through these very difficult times. And, and you have a heart of service 
Um, you're not just doing your job because you have to do your job and, and you're educating our students uh, to be ready for the 21st century and its challenges, um, but you do it with such care and such compassion and such understanding. And, and I know that the thousands and thousands of students and families uh, that go through what we've been going through, um, it's, it's hard and it's difficult. And as leaders, we, we don't have all the answers. <laughs> Um, and and we, we seek to do uh, the best. And, and I just want to say thank you um, from on behalf of uh, the city of Downey. So let me go ahead and read to you. The Mayor's Legacy Award uh, goes to John A. Garcia, uh, Jr. In recognition of your selfless dedication and always going above and beyond for others. Your heartfelt efforts and accomplishments have been of enormous value to our community and have helped to further the common goal of making our city a better place for all. Thank you, Dr. Garcia, for leaving a legacy of service and generosity in our community. Thank you for your leadership. And let me go ahead and put on my mask. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, well, first and foremost, obviously, I want to thank you, Mayor Frometa, uh, and the council and uh, city member, our city manager, Levis, and quite frankly, the entire city of Downey staff uh, who work every day to partner and collaborate with us as the school district to provide the best we can for our community. And I'm very, very humbled and honored to receive this award. And you talked a lot about um, kind of my, my background and my history and the passion that I bring to this work every single day. And really, so much of that is as a result of being a kid of Downing of uh, being a student in our schools, being a member of this community. Uh, had the great pleasure of being on a Rotary Zoom call today with Chief Herlock. Uh, absolutely thrilled that uh, Chief Herlock is also a product of Downey Unified Schools uh, as well and knows the community uh, from that lens as well. So I was very excited to hear him tell his story today. Really, really appreciated that. Um, you know, being up here today in regard to the legacy really stands on some decisions that our Board of Education made starting in 2013, which first and foremost was to hire me. Um, so I was very excited about that to begin with, to be able to come home. I had never worked in Downey before becoming superintendent. And in 2014, the following year, the board set out challenge, challenges for us and a vision to provide a 21st century education that made sure every one of our students was college and career ready, globally competitive, and a citizen of strong character. And we've been living that, and I've been working to try to live up to those ideals that our Board of Education set since then. Last March, we were all thrown a curveball, a huge curveball, something that hasn't happened essentially since 1918. 
um, in the United States. And uh, again, Chief Herlock referenced this again today and the challenges they're going through with their uh, firefighting force. But I'm so proud of our organization. And it was because of the challenge that the board laid out to us in 2014 that we were able to transition in a matter of a couple of weeks and get thousands of devices into kids' hands. We had talked about being a one-to-one -one district and moving that way, and it happened literally overnight, and we were able to flip a switch. I'm really, really proud we were able to get devices and hotspots into our students' hands. Uh, there were some that we weren't, but we remedied that by the end of the year. And as we started this new year, we had 14,000 new iPads that are Wi-Fi enabled for our TK through eighth grade students. Every one of our high school students had a Chromebook that they could access the internet on uh, and move forward from there. In addition to that, I really, really am proud of our food distribution, our food services. We've served over 1.5 million meals since the middle of March to our students, and not just our students, any child 18 and younger within the district boundary. So very excited about that. Um, but I also wanna take the opportunity to recognize and thank Chief Milligan uh, and his officers, because a lot of those have required us to get support from Downey Police Department, and they've been there every single step of the way. So Chief, I really appreciate you and your officers and all the work in supporting our food distributions. Can't thank you enough. Thank you very much. Also wanna recognize our teachers and our staff. You mentioned our 1,000 teachers and our over 1,700 classified uh, non-teaching employees. Uh, they're amazing. Their commitment to our students every single day. Uh, our teachers have faced challenges this year that they never envisioned in their careers. Many of us has, and they've risen to the occasion every single time. And they are working harder than they ever have to provide for our students. Is distance learning the same as in-person learning? Absolutely not. Are our teachers trying to make it that and come as close as they can every day? Absolutely, and we're working hard to get our kids back in schools as soon as we can safely do so. But I have to recognize our teachers and our classified staff for really, really uh, working hard every day to do the best that they can. I also wanna thank our associations. We have a teacher's association, our employee associations working with us every step of the way. It's been absolutely amazing. Um, and lastly, but certainly not least, our parents and our students have been incredible. And Mayor Fermenta, you're one of those parents and working with the challenges associated, but I, could, I, can't, I can't tell you that our, our, our parental support and our student engagement, um, while there are challenges involved, our parents and students continue to work hard every single day to make the best of this not great situation. Before I sign off with just a couple of things, I also wanna recognize and thank City Manager Levis, uh, and his staff here because we're currently working on a partnership and collaboration with PIH Downey in which we can find a way to deliver vaccines to our staff and to our communities here in our own environment instead of having them go to the County Office of Education, trying to make that happen in collaboration with the city and PIH. So, uh, Gilbert, thank you so much for your partnership in that. Really excited. I'm hoping we can make that come to fruition and really accelerate it for our, our staffs and our community and have our own vaccination here in Downey uh, in our partnership with PIH and the city. So as we continue to look to live up to the ideals, I want to assure the city of a couple of things. In your logo, in the city of Downey logo, there are three pillars, community, public services, and schools. And I want to assure you that our Board of Education challenges us every day as staff to do everything we can to live up to that pillar that the city took and thought enough of our schools to value to make it one of the three pillars of this outstanding community in the schools. And we're working hard to live up to that every single day. There are challenges associated with that, but we will emerge from this with some things that we didn't have before. We're going to emerge with new 21st century facilities at all four of our middle schools in which every one of our kids matriculates through. We're going to emerge in a one-to-one -one environment in which our teachers know how to effectively integrate technology moving forward. And lastly, we are going to emerge with a level of, and I love that you used these words earlier, Mayor Fermetta, grace, patience, and flexibility with each other, with ourselves, with so many things and a new appreciation for what we do in this community every single day when we come out the other side of this. Uh, I can't thank you enough again, and I'm humbled by this award, and I truly appreciate it. Thank you very much, and thank you to City Manager Levis and your staff. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, John. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Thank you. Now it looks like we're going to move on to our next presentation. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, I visit the our council meetings about every two months or so to do these uh, regular COVID-19 response updates. And so I'm here today again. Thank you. My name is Rakti Cloak. I am the city's emergency preparedness program manager, and I will provide an update of our city's response to COVID-19 since November 10th. As usual, I'll share the timeline since then, talk about the current stats, what is Downey doing to respond to it, and what is the current health order now? As you know, the health order changes almost daily. And so I will just kind of give a quick overview. I won't touch on every single thing. I just want to highlight a few things here. Um, we saw in November, the county did start to tighten up restrictions. Uh, we saw that they were allowing outdoor gatherings with less than 15 people, but no more than three households. I want to point this out because as of just yesterday, we are now back to about that. Mm -hmm. But saying that, I, just, I still would like to go ahead and share with you what did happen in November and December. Later on in November, the county continued to uh, become more strict, where it required that all gatherings of members outside the house were holes were to cease between the hours of 10 p.m. and 5 a.m., um, and that restaurants were to only do pickup or delivery. Early December, uh, the county did launch their Keep LA County Dining Grant Program to help local restaurants. And we did see the county launch this COVID-19 home test collections for those who were unable to do testing at the sites. The state did launch California Notify. This was an app to help with contact tracing. Um, in December, the city, city of Downey, did also complete its final rounds of CARES Act reporting. I'll provide a little bit more details about that as well in uh, the later slides. In December, as you know, um, the number of COVID cases increased exponentially. And so we also saw a lot of restrictions. The county did revise its temporary targeted safer at home health order. Uh, we saw playgrounds remain open. However, personal care services began to close. Grocery stores had a maximum capacity of 35. Temporary outdoor seating is closed as well. Um, Mid-December, we saw the county begin vaccinations. Uh, late December, the county did extend the temporary target safer at home health order to align with the state's regional stay at home order for indefinitely until just recently. Uh, I wanted to mention that in January, the county did continue to provide a lot of outreach to ensure that people had information about COVID-19 through their community health worker outreach initiatives. And then we also, in here in the city of Downey, we did extend our ordinance to establish a temporary uh, moratorium on evictions of commercial tenants impacted by COVID-19. I know I don't have it here and that's because it's been recently updated, but as you all may know already, and I alluded to, the health order has been updated. We're back to November 15th health order, which means, and I just, I will kind of go through those right now really quickly. Private gatherings limited to three households and a total of 15 person total. Uh, family and entertainment centers are open at 50% capacity. Again, those are only for outdoor operations. Museums, zoos, and aquariums can operate outdoors. Um, so personal care facilities can open indoors with 25% capacity. Fitness center facilities are open for outdoor operations. Indoor malls are 25% for indoor capacity. Restaurants, wineries, and breweries are still currently only takeout only. However, 
Starting on the 29th, we will see that change and we may start seeing some outdoor dinings again. Currently, what are the stats looking like? Whoops. So I see here we're well over our, unfortunately, the number of confirmed cases since the pandemic has started is well over a million. I wanted to share some things though. This is actually, since the last presentation I provided back in November, it has tripled since then. Meaning in less than three months, we've tripled versus nine months. So it's, it's very interesting, um, the development we're at. In terms of the number of deaths, unfortunately what we have seen in these less than three months is doubled. Um, that type of rate also reflects here in Downey as well. We've seen uh, three times increase in terms of the number of COVID cases and close to double the number of deaths. So it's very unfortunate. As everyone is probably well aware, um, vaccinations are occurring throughout California. Here in the city of Downey, we do actually have a mega vaccination site and at Los Angeles County's Office of Education. Um, this started back on the 19th. It is open seven days a week, and we are tentatively, it will be open through um, mid-February. Here's the location. Uh, if you wanna know and get more information about vaccination, please visit vaccinatelacounty.com. Um, I know the goal for this particular site is expected to be at 4,000, but I know that we are not currently at that just because of the, the supplies of vaccines. Um, starting on the 21st of this month, phase 1B, meaning those who are 65 years and over, are eligible for vaccinations. What has the city been doing? Um, just quick updates again. Our emergency operations center continues to stay activated. We are at our lowest level, meaning we continue to monitor, staff are monitoring the situation. Uh, we are always working on cost recovery, making sure that we can recoup all the expenses as much as we can. Uh, recently, again, we had completed our CARES Act report. The city also has been helping to support both city departments and partner agencies with uh, personal protective supplies, such as hand sanitizations and um, some masks that was made available through the county. And we've been sharing that um, with our Los Angeles County Office of Education, Downey Adult School, Metro. So these are some of the partner agencies that we've shared some of our resources with. We just recently completed a food drive. This will be the third food drive since the pandemic here in LA in the city of Downey. And we served at 2,141 households. Some photos we see there, we see our mayor helping to load up some of the cars. We also have our community emergency response team uh, volunteer members assisting at our food drive. Um, this is a volunteer group that's assisted in all of the food drives thus far. Other efforts um, with our city department. So our city manager's office continues to update our websites. They update this on the evenings, on the weekends. Just know that you can visit our website and get up-to-date information. Social media postings, as you can see, since November, we've had 485, reaching well over half a million people. Hotline calls, since November, we saw 403 calls. Since the pandemic, we responded to 3,085 calls. This is a quick, um, a graph, pie graph of our uh, CARES Act. So the CARES money was uh, helped us in many ways. Um, some of the things included administrative expenses here in the city, but also assisting with business, um, business assistant programs that is offered to our local businesses, food programs such as our senior programs, housing support, meaning uh, rental support for those who are struggling through COVID, and, and also assisting to make sure that we have telework capabilities so our staff can work from home, but also provide city services no matter whatever the restrictions are. So those are some of the expenses and, you, and we were very fortunate to get the CARES Act money for that. Other things that uh, city manager's office has been involved with, we helped to coordinate They've helped to help coordinate candy cane lane drive through events, the city's first holiday caravan event, and recently mentioned the food drive. The police department continues to remain active. They continuously respond to calls related to the health order. They also help to educate residents and local business regarding 
the ever-changing county health orders. Um, they help to respond and coordinate with parks and recreation to help patrol their city parks when needed. And they do assist our homeless population to get assistance and resources to them to help mitigate COVID-19. And they also help provide personal protective equipment and supplies to their personnel and get vaccinations for their personnel as well. Fires response. Fire is seeing um, the, the call volume definitely has increased with an average of 29% um, increase through this time. We have seen a dramatic increase in COVID-19 cases. In December, it was 47. It has rose to 74 in the week of January 10th. And this is consistent throughout the county. Uh, Downey Fire continued to participate in the annual Operation Santa Toy Drive. And this year, though, it was a drive through Other things that we have seen differently, and I'll just quickly go through these. These are some, um, some policy or plans that, of the county that has impacted uh, fire department's um, operations. One is surge assistant plan, meaning that there is a policy now where area hospitals can utilize fire department personnel to assist with the management of ambulance receiving areas. Thus far, city of Downey's fire department has not received any requests for that support. Um, another one is that Cal the California Office of Emergency Services has stepped in to assist with the local hospitals is, um, experiencing staffing so shortages due to the pandemic. So they are asking for volunteer requests. Um, I'm sorry, out of state county hospitals can ask for um, support. Um, thus far, City of Downey Fire Department has not um, committed any resources outside of the county. Parks and Recreation is always busy. Um, since November, they've provided 12,568 senior grab and go meals, conducted 3,700 95 wellness checks and have delivered 850 home meals. They continue to do various virtual um, recreation programs. Here's the photos of some of those. And obviously a bunch more, especially in the holiday season. Community development. Here's just some um, numbers that we see in terms of the types of programs that uh, We've kind of mentioned outdoor dining permits. We've seen 34 issued to pending tempor temporary outdoor businesses. There are 10 uh, operations permit that has been issued. In terms of residential rental assistance program, we have ish distributed 878 applications, um, distributed 154 checks, and has uh, process we've processed 47 applications. Citywide business grants, there's been, uh, which are $25,000 each, 32 business received those applications, 14 business are actually pending final um, reimbursement approval and 50 are on the waiting list. Um, in terms of our downtown restaurant parklet grants, which are $10,000 each, there has been six businesses who have received that grant. In terms of our city clerk, as you know, one of the things that we are trying to do to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 is we have went back to virtual city council meetings since November 24th. Thank you to those who are joining us today virtually right now. Our finance department continues to track and document expenses um, and our staff continues to adhere to social distancing protocols. Human resources, some of the things that has changed for us as well here in city for city staff. Um, our HR department has actually developed our COVID prevention program to address COVID related employee health and safety. Again, we do value uh, all the staff who continue to work during COVID time. So we wanna make sure they stay safe. I know a lot's been going on. So again, if you ever have questions about what is the health order now, please visit our website, go to the city's website and you will see COVID-19 updates. Um, if you'd like to actually talk to someone, a live person, please feel free to call us at 562-299-6711. We actually have two staff who man this line. They speak both English and Spanish. We invite you, to whatever questions related to COVID, um, don't hesitate to call that number. And we also have our number there for our senior wellness check program. And if you ever have questions about county resources, there's also 211 and obviously LA County's Department of Public Health website as well. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thank you so much. And that concludes my presentation. Does anyone have questions? 
No questions, just a really great presentation. Thank you, Rakti. Thank you for, for putting it all together and keeping us and our community informed with everything that has been we've been doing and uh, to respond to the COVID uh, pandemic. And so thank you, I appreciate this, this presentation. Thank you. Well, now that we've got, we've uh, finished our presentations, I would like to move on with city council member announcements, requests for future agenda items, conference meeting reports, et cetera. And I will begin with uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem to my right. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to start off by just welcoming, welcoming everyone who is watching us here virtually this evening, I know we had some minor glitches with our YouTube, so I hope uh, you're able to participate and watch us uh, via Zoom. Uh, there's not many events that I have been attended, uh, but I did want to mention that I had the opportunity of going to our drive through food distribution with our mayor. Uh, and I want to mention that over 2,000 families receive food and other essential items. So I want to thank our supervisor, Janice Hahn, Los Angeles Regional Food Bank and LA County Library for the partnership and this great opportunity to serve so many of our residents who are in need right now. And, and not to get into too much into politics, but I did wanna mention that I watched the inauguration of our president, uh, Joe Biden. I mentioned this only because of his message of uh, unity and civility. And I think if, if anything, what 2020 has taught us is that uh, one, we need to be uh, kind uh, to each other. Life is short. Uh, we need to respect each other. Uh, and we need to make sure that we tell our loved ones how much, how much we appreciate them and how much we care about them. Uh, but that's just one uh, takeaway that I received from 2020. And I'm very hopeful about 2021 especially like uh, Rakti uh, mentioned, uh, our vaccines are being provided and they are be being provided to our most vulnerable members of the community, those who are 65 and over. I know it's been hard and difficult to uh, get appointments to get our loved ones vaccinated because either uh, there's not enough appointments due to uh, lack of vaccines or just the website uh, we've, experience problems, but I know the county is working on those issues and uh, they are looking into a new registration uh, option, which should be opening fairly soon. So I just wanna ask everyone to please be patient. And again, um, I know 2021, I feel it, it's gonna be a better year. So I just ask that everyone be patient. And uh, like I've said before, please be civil with each other. And I did want to mention an upcoming event, which our mayor will be participating in. Uh, this is a virtual event. This Saturday, January 30th, is, it's a human trafficking virtual event, Fight Against Human Trafficking. Uh, it's from 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. It is a free event, but donations are also appreciated. And you can find more information on my Facebook page, along with our mayor's Facebook page. I know she'll be talking more about it, uh, but I did wanna mention that our mayor will be one of the guest speakers at this event. So please join us and learn more about human trafficking uh, and see how you can help. And that concludes my comments. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to uh, call on council member uh, Alvarez, if you have any comments for the meeting. Yes, um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, good evening, uh, Madam Mayor, council members, Gilbert staff and community members. Um, let me turn my camera on, sorry. Okay. Um, I will keep my comments brief. I have, I have met with many community members in recent weeks and the stories are all very similar. The last few months have been very challenging for our community. Countless families have been impacted uh, by an unprecedented public health crisis. People are hurting. 
and so many levels. We in the government have provided a response, but we must recognize that we have done uh, a lot, but it, it's not enough. So um, we need to establish more protections for working families, for essential workers, for seniors, for veterans, for children, uh, for the unhoused, for our most vulnerable communities. Um, over the next few months, many here in Downey will receive a vaccine, but the, that vaccine will not fix the years of economic inequality and systematic disadvantage that we have seen in our community. I thank all the community members here in Downey who have come forward before this council to each of us to express your, your hurt. When you say that you need rent relief, we hear you. And, and I think we do. Um, when you say you need higher minimum wage, when we, we, do, we do hear you. And I believe uh, that as well. And when we need, uh, when, when they say that they need reform and accountability, we hear them. So I suggest to please keep calling, contacting us. Uh, your voice matters and the council is here to listen and to change the direction of our city so that we can meet the needs of all the constituents. Uh, with that in mind, I would like to discuss, discuss an item. Even before the pandemic, high percentage and on the house owners of Downey families rent their home and many are struggling with paying their mortgage and i believe we must study the topic and hear from the experts uh, of the public in regards to housing affordable and i request gilbert city manager and miss mayor claudia Fometa, uh mayor um that if we can schedule a presentation with experts on housing protections and so that way we can speak about it and we can listen uh, uh, about it as well. And would you like me to also make me my request and write in regards to this, Ms. Mayor? Um, Council Member Alvarez, I don't believe you, you have to submit your request in writing. Um, would you elaborate uh, a little bit further in terms of what type of presentation you are asking uh, staff to, to do? Yes, um, basically more protections for uh, the renters and that it's more likely to have a rent control in the city. Thank you, Council Member Alvarez. Um, city Manager Levas, would you? Um, sure, um, Council Member Alvarez, um, Madam Mayor. So what we can do is from, from staff perspective is, um, as I hear the, the request is to have an item on the agenda for discussion. So um, I know that they would like, um, Council Member Alvarez would like to have some, some experts, but certainly what needs to be, uh, happen is um, we will put this on the next agenda for the council to consider, and then you will vote on, um, on that particular item and to give staff direction as to whether or not to move forward with any particular um, alternatives that may be, that may come out of that discussion. So what we could do is have a, um, agenda item for next council meeting for you all to consider uh, council member Alvarez's request. And, and just for clarification, what is your request? Um, it's a discussion item for uh, rent control. Is that um, the request um, council member Alvarez? That is correct. I, I don't see a, I don't see a problem with that council member Alvarez um, that can be placed on the agenda for next uh, council meetings so we can discuss further. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor. Will that conclude your comments? Yes, that concludes my comments. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. That's okay. Uh, okay. We're glad you're feeling better, by the way. Thank you so much. Uh, council Member Trujillo. Hi, good evening. Um, first and foremost, I want to echo some of the sentiment expressed by my colleague, Council Member Alvarez. Um, the number one priority, I believe, for us as a city government is to make sure our residents are protected. And during these uh, difficult times, we want to make sure that families have food on the table and shelter. So there's any residents out there 
that are in need, uh, please come to us, come to City Hall, leave me a message. Um, we'll call you back and try to get you to the right resources. Um, that's what we're here for, we're here to serve. So first and foremost, uh, please feel free to come to City Hall, leave me a message, anyone of us a message, and we'll get back to you. And the next thing, I just wanted to uh, assure the residents that um, I've received the complaints, numerous complaints about um, illegal racing, uh, safety issue. It's a big safety issue for our families and our kids. If we hear about cars racing in our neighborhoods, um, I know they've taken to the mall in particular, but I can assure the residents that our police are on it. They're responding. They've heard of the complaints. It has not gone unnoticed. We are responding and taking appropriate actions. Again, feel free to continue to reach out to me as well as any other council members with any concerns you can have on any issue, but especially when it comes to public safety. So uh, thank you uh, to our police department for responding to the residents' complaints on this issue. And with that, that is all. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Trujillo. Nice to see you. Uh, Council Member Ashton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just really briefly, uh, for this is an item for staff. Uh, on Paramount Boulevard, I know Edison was doing some work right in front of their substation just south of uh, Firestone. And it seems like they've completed their work, but the 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 condition of the the pavement there is really not what I would expect, as, especially considering we had just repaved the entire area, so so it was really uh, in good shape. And then they kind of left it in a way where, um, you know, it almost feels like it, there's like little mini speed bumps where where they uh, did their digging at. So if we could get back with with Edison and have them do a better job of uh, fixing those, those sections that they dug up on Paramount, just south of uh, Firestone in front of their uh, substation, that would be greatly appreciated. With that, it's good to see everyone. And uh, I, I also, I agree with uh, my two uh, previous colleagues, uh, council members Trio and Alvarez. We do need to do what we can to, to protect our residents and any information on options of what we can do to, to better provide, uh, uh, a, a, if anything, a safety net for those uh, residents that are really being affected by the, this COVID uh, pandemic would be greatly appreciated. With that, that concludes my comments. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Ashton, and a thank you to everybody. Uh, certainly, we understand and, and we know that this pandemic has caused great financial harm to communities across the globe, uh, across the country, and certainly uh, our city is not immune to that. Um, we will continue to look at ways to um, to respond uh, effectively and efficiently to the needs of our communities, uh, understanding that um, financially uh, our local governments only have um, a certain amount to, to respond to services. Um, and so it's a very delicate balance, but um, I, I also agree with the rest of the council members. Um, our job is to provide um, additional guidance and seek uh, resources so that our communities can be protected and can um, be helped during these very difficult times. Um, speaking of uh, a couple of areas that have been of concern, and to those of you that are continuing to listen, um, I, I wanna tell you that we are listening to our residents. Um, there's been a lot of complaints regarding the racing and the, and the speeding uh, around various segments of our city. I want to especially uh, give thanks to uh, Chief Dean Milligan um, and your staff for uh, the job that you're doing, Chief. Um, there's There were several complaints about uh, racing and, and individuals doing donuts behind Stonewood Mall um, during the evening hours or the late night hours. And uh, I do want to also thank um, the Director of uh, Community Development, uh, Aldo, Aldo Schindler, for uh, reaching out to Stonewood Management. Um, they will be uh, more vigilant and, and they will have additional security in that uh, area. And uh, 
Chief uh, Milligan provided um, some additional information to me that I wanted to share with our community. And that is uh, last weekend, uh, there was uh, a couple of teams uh, of officers that conducted um, speed uh, enforcement, uh, in particularly race, in particular uh, racing, correct, Chief? And uh, you indicated um, they were over not specifically racing, but we were we were addressing traffic issues concerning car clubs who often end up being involved in these races. So while we didn't interrupt any actual racing, we were addressing car clubs whose tendencies generally generally are to gather and then do donuts and to speed when they're leaving a, a location or whatever else, creating a lot of the problems that we've been experiencing in the Stillwood Mall and other areas. Thank you, thank you, Chief. Um, and, and you indicated uh, over 40 citations were given um, between Thursday and Saturday. And so that, again, um, sends, continues to send a clear message to our community that we, uh, our, our police department is out there. Uh, our officers will continue to remain vigilant. Um, I would like to ask um, if we can uh, look at uh, speed enforcement uh, along Downey Avenue. I've received several complaints from our residents. Uh, Downey Avenue, specifically between Stewart and Gray and Gardendale. Also, the other segment uh, on Downey Avenue between Florence and Gallatin. Uh, one more is uh, Stewart and Gray between Reeves and uh, Old River School Road. I think that uh, the residents have mentioned those can be uh, little hot spots. And uh, as uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem indicated, uh, we did attend the food distribution site and we are very grateful for Supervisor Janice Hahn uh, and uh, her partnership. Those 20, over 2,100 families that uh, received meal distributions, uh, that was, again, we realized that may be a drop in the bucket, um, but it is my goal as mayor to have uh, a food distribution on a quarterly basis. Uh, we are partnering next with Assemblywoman uh, Christina Garcia, and uh, we will continue to partner with, uh, of course, the LA Regional Food Bank. Uh, we realize how, uh, what a difficult time this is for many families, that one in four uh, Individuals are experiencing hunger uh, in two out of five children um, as well. And um, I also want to uh, let our community know um, we are very proud to be able to be, uh, to have been chosen by uh, Supervisor Janice Hahn. She has a restaurant voucher program and it is a $25,000 grant um, that uh, she that she had uh, in, in Pick Downey, and we in turn picked uh, one of our uh, mem one of our organizations, nonprofit organizations that benefits uh, our most vulnerable uh, Downey uh, families. And this is the TLC, the True Lasting Connections Program through Downey Unified. And so what we've done is uh, purchase twenty five thousand dollars worth of gift cards, uh, benefiting small family owned restaurants in our city that have been uh, impacted by COVID. And uh, then those gift cards in turn have been handed over to TLC. Uh, and then TLC has selected uh, many families within that program. And again, it's benefiting our, our small uh, family owned restaurants. And it's also benefiting um, our families, uh, our that have been impacted um, in Downey Unified School District as well. So we are very grateful for those partnerships. Uh, with that, everybody, that will conclude my comments and my asks. Thank you. Now is the time for non-agenda public comment. Before we begin the non-agenda public comment period, I would like to remind members of the public participating telephonically that the city meeting rules contained in the Downey Municipal Code prohibit any conduct that disrupts, disturbs, or interferes with the orderly conduct of the meeting, even if you're participating telephonically. Each speaker shall have three minutes to address the council on issues that are within the city's jurisdiction. Since we are under a federal, state, and local emergency declaration in Los Angeles County Safer at Work, and in the community's order, I will limit this non-agenda public comment period to 30 minutes, pursuant to Downey Municipal Code Section 2105G. Members of the public who wish to address the City Council regarding non-agenda items may now call our teleconference phone line at 562-299-6622. 
For those who submitted comments via email, your comments will be read into the record and no further public comment via teleconference will be permitted. City Clerk Duarte, did we receive any written correspondence on non-agenda items to be read into the record? Yes, Mayor, we have two emails. The first email is from Etna Mendoza. And she would like to congratulate the new council members. We also received a letter from uh, Lee Squire. Lee Squire, Vietnam era veteran, civil rights advocate. Good evening, mayor and members of the city council. Subject, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day and messenger of equality and opportunity. His message of the civil rights movement was to be nonviolent change by peaceful protest and civil disobedience. I consider Dr. Luther King Jr. as the father of the civil rights movement, the Mahatma Gandhi of America for civil rights, a black rabbi of peace. Millions of people have benefited from the civil rights since his death in April, 1968. He spoke of not judging a person by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I ask in closing for everyone to read his message of hope in speech, I have a dream. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have uh, speakers on the phone? Yes, Mayor, we do. Hello, please state your name and begin speaking. <laughs> Yes, this is the famous goat puppet, food critic, and Downey critic. <laughs> so do I get three minutes? Sir, your time is running. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm logged on to your Zoom right now. I tried your YouTube channel, and apparently you blocked the audio. <laughs> So nobody can hear. I could see the nice, pretty people on the screen, with the exception of that ugly Ron Ash. But I can't hear your voices on YouTube. Go oh. puppet went to the agenda project. Go puppet unlocked. However, you raise my virtual hook tonight. Since I'm a goat, I don't have a hand. I have a hook. So you've been running your Zooms for months and months without the ability to participate in violation of 54950 of the Brown Act. I've even left messages at the law office of a certain councilwoman. She's my mom, Blanca. And I attempted, or my friend Mr. Swimmer attempted, to meet and confer on the matter. However, given the fact that you want to be like Mitchell Englander on Monday, who got 14 months in federal prison, there are certain things similar to that. But Sir, so we can't hear you. We're going to disconnect the line. We can't hear you. You can hear me. I'm here. <laughs> so you see, I have to do it twice. Like back in the days when I was operating my special radio channel, Earth Puppet Radio. Okay. So you try everything in the world so the public can't hear you and participate. But Goat Puppet can defeat any barrier to the First Amendment you so choose. 
And God Puppet is preparing his lawsuit the people of the United States of America versus Blanca Pacheco and the city of Downey. Right? No. Just no. Sir, your three minutes no. are up. Yeah. Hello, please state your name and begin speaking. Yes, good evening. My name is David Gonzalez. And first of all, greetings to Mayor Prometa. Mayor Pro Tem Pacheco and the rest of the city council this evening. I just wanted to take a moment to congratulate dear friend Hector Sosa on receiving that distinction this evening from Mayor Frometa, Mayor's Choice Award. Uh, great job, Hector. Keep up the great work. Uh, your work with the local youth is uh, definitely invaluable and appreciated here in the community. And now your recent role with the gangs that are downing. I know you're going to continue to be a champion for our community and, and lead by example here with pride. So congratulations, Hector. Keep up the great work. I look forward to, again, the work that's to come with gangs that are downing and all the ideas that you've shared already that I know you're putting together and then you're going to see to fruition this year. So count on my support. Uh, thank you, Fermenta, for recognizing Hector, just one of the many. Uh, uh, proud and, and vested members in our community, and I'm, I'm, I'm such a worthy uh, recognition this evening. So, congratulations, Hector, and uh, give up the great work. Hello, please state your name and begin speaking. Good evening. My name is VJ Patel. Good evening. Mayor Pometa and council members and city staff. I want to begin with thanking all of you for moving us through this crazy pandemic. I don't think it's said enough, and it's unfortunate that our council meetings have turned into a zoo, but it is what it is. I'm not the smartest person in the room, but I'm confused when council member Alvarez brings up rent forgiveness or rent control, um, that might be an issue that's better suited for Sacramento or DC. Not necessarily Downey, but I, I could be wrong. So I just want to urge the council members when they sit down and think about any type of rent forgiveness issue to really sit down and consider all aspects, all people involved. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and begin speaking. Good evening, you fat cunts. Why no closed captioning? Officials during the public comment period, city council meetings, you're asking for lawsuit violating the Ralph and Brown Act of open meeting laws, that cunt. This is called city's retaliation plan, right? Flometa? Fat Flometa, are you listening to me? Your fat white dress and those short little brown boots? Those boots weren't made for walking, bitches. They're made for talking. 42 U.S.C. 1983. So people need to... 310-477-6565. Report why the city of Downey's agreement with developers is okay to steal and build around people who are living in poverty and can't pay the rent like one of the items like on item seven of the agenda, you fat cunts. Critical comments are important. Critical comments on point. Are you listening, you fat bitches? What? Closed captions important. How far is the nigger going to? Yeah. This is what we're going to do to the dirty nigger. Send for Meta, send the Jews, send everyone who's working under the table with you. 
Let's give them back to the dark garden to save America. Did you not hear that Biden got tossed off of his immigration plan by a judge recently? Let's go back to the constitutional government. We intend to do our part. Freedom. Freedom, you fat niggers. We will have to fight for every inch from now on. Public issues should be uninhibited, robust, and wide open, and include vehement, caustic, and sometimes very, very, very unpleasant sharp attacks on bad fucking government, like what we have with Mitchell Englander and his 14 months in Lompoc jail and fines, you stupid cunts. The political arena is often abusive. And criticism is a part of the abuse. Don't forget, call Homeland Security, 213-330-9803. In addition to that, what? See, they can't even hear me on live on stream, YouTube, you dumb cunts. Damn, don't you people get anything right with your text? Your time is up. Hello, please state your name and begin speaking. Hi, my name is Carlos Aranabar. I just had a couple of uh, comments and questions. I was calling in support of the renters in the Newville Street area with regard to uh, uh, measures that are being proposed for permitted parking. Uh, one of the renters from last week mentioned uh, her views and she advocated for her family and her, her fellow tenants, but there are now also reports of harassment uh, upon the uh, renters um, uh, of throwing eggs and other types of assault. So we wanted to bring that to the attention of the city and possibly check that out. I'm also calling the support of other renters and other, men uh, other measures to support them in doing this uh, pandemic, including rent control. I also wanted to see uh, uh, city staff can uh, inform us about uh, city's involvement in possibly extending the vaccine site at LACO beyond uh, mid-February, or if that is fully upon the uh, LA County public health. Uh, the last thing I wanted to uh, bring about, or at least uh, possibly get a response from city staff, uh, they could share my concern about um, uh, Councilman Trujillo's in, um, investigation with his uh, work with the DA's office, and if uh, the city staff is keeping uh, abreast of any developments in that case. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and begin speaking. Jorge. Buenas tardes, concejales. Este, mi nombre es Jorge. Señor, um, permítame un momentito. Le voy a tener que traducir, entonces, si puede decir unas palabras y luego me da oportunidad de, de traducir lo que dice, ¿eh? Sí, claro. Puede, puede empezar. Sí, este, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Jorge. Yo soy miembro de la Unión de Vecinos en la ciudad de Downey. Hace unos meses, en el verano, este, uno de mis vecinos falleció por el estrés que tenía sobre la pandemia. Ok, permítame no un momentito. My name is Jorge, and I am a member of the Tenants Association in Downey. A few months ago, um, a neighbor passed away due to stress related to um, rent issues. Okay, puede seguir? Sí, este, él falleció porque tenía estrés y por la pandemia no podía encontrar trabajo. Este, a mí me duele que las comunidades Este, estén sufriendo y el consejo municipal no está haciendo nada. Ok, para... permítame. He, he passed away because he had stress and was having a hard time um, finding a job due to COVID. It hurts me uh, to see that uh, people are suffering and the city council is not doing anything. Ok, proceda. Sí, este... 
yo por lo que miro en las noticias, el condado de Los Ángeles dio dinero a la ciudad de Downey. Pero la ciudad de Downey, ¿qué dinero ha puesto para ayudar a las familias? Okay, aquí per, en la ciudad permítame. De Um, what I have seen in the news is that LA County has given the city of Downey money, but what has Downey done with that money to help families? What a procedure. Sí, sí. El, el, la ciudad de Downey no ha puesto dinero para las rentas, solo el condado. Eh, estoy pidiéndoles a los concejales que pongan un control de renta. Okay. Um, Downey has not given any money, uh, only the county, and I am now requesting that the city of Downey establish rent control. Que pongan este, un moratorio para este, ayudar a los inquilinos, a los dueños de propiedad, a los negocios, que son negocios chicos, no son empresas grandes. Los tenemos que apoyar. Okay, uh, I asked the city of Downey to help uh, residential tenants, uh, property owners, and small business owners at this time. Sí, y quiero decirles a los cónsules que aprueben más vivienda que la gente pueda pagar, porque no podemos pagar, estamos batallando. I asked the city council to approve more low income housing because we are having a hard time uh, paying rent. Yo soy un chofer para Amazon y eh, pago mucha renta, pero no puedo ir a mi casa y disfrutar a mi apartamento. Estoy pagando mucha renta. Eh, las rentas están exageradas. Los sueldos no alcanzan. I am an Amazon truck driver and my rent is too high. I cannot enjoy coming back home to my apartment because the rents are too high and we cannot afford it. ¿De qué sirve estar pagando tres mil dólares en renta, veinticinco mil? Al mes, si no estamos y los apartamentos a veces no le dan el mantenimiento, eso no es justo. What's the point of paying $3,000, $25,000 in rent if the apartments are not even maintained? That is not fair. Sí, eh, les pido también que pongan más dinero a la comunidad y apoyen a las familias. Hay personas que solamente son solas o tienen tres niños y se les es difícil pagar la renta. I ask that you um, give more money to the community. Sometimes families uh, have uh, three members in the family and cannot pay their rent. Sí, y a los niños chiquitos, este, y a los ancianos que les den apoyo a los ancianos. Es todo. Ok, gracias. Um, I ask that you uh, lend some support to uh, families with small children and seniors. That is all. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Please state your name and begin speaking. Mary Aldisores. I'm sorry? Mary Aldisores. Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, buenas noches, concejales de la ciudad. Aldisores, eh, soy un miembro de la comunidad y es muy importante que la ciudad tenga eh, un, el, el control de renta, ya que hay muchas personas de la tercera edad que cuentan con deshabilidades y que no pueden pagar una, una renta muy alta. Okay. Es importante uh, que usted... Permítame un momentito para traducir lo que dijo. 
Uh, ¿Su nombre es Merli? ¿Cuál es el apellido? Albizures. Al Merli Albizures. Um, I am calling uh, in regards to uh, asking the city of Downey to establish um, rental assistance uh, for seniors in the community. Proceda. Eh, porque hay muchas personas de la tercera edad que no pueden pagar una renta alta. Uh, because there are many members of the community that are seniors and cannot afford to pay a um, high rent. Y hay personas que tienen disabilities, madres que son solteras con, con hijos y que trabajan muy duramente. Uh, there are also uh, members of the community with disabilities and single mothers that work very hard. Que pagan sus taxes y que apoyan a los concejales, como en este caso a, a ustedes los concejales de la ciudad de Downey, que recuerden que primero está el pueblo y después ustedes. Um, these are uh, community members that pay taxes and support uh, the council members. And I want to remind you that um, the community is first and, and you are second. Gra Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Gracias. We have four more calls here. Please state your name and begin speaking. My name is Brian Heyman. I'm a resident of the city. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank Mayor Frometa for her column that appeared in the Downey Patriot, wherein she lays out uh, all of the uh, issues in the city that she would like staff to address, especially dealing with quality of life, such as uh, responding to requests for removal of abandoned furniture and that kind of thing. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's very important, but all of these issues that the, the mayor addressed are, are really important to the quality of life in our city. And I'm glad to see that uh, she is addressing those issues. It's easy to overlook them, but um, we all live in the city of Downey because it's such a well-maintained city, but uh, we need to all remain vigilant to keep it that way. And also I'd like to uh, echo some of the comments of the previous callers about uh, frustration with using uh, YouTube for the uh, live stream bar broadcast of the city council meetings. It just doesn't seem to be working very well. And even Zoom tonight uh, didn't work well, uh, didn't have any audio connection on it. And if residents aren't gonna be able to attend the city council meetings live anymore uh, because of the COVID-19 shutdowns, I think the city uh, staff really need to step up and do a better job of producing uh, digitally uh, the city council meetings. If uh, staff isn't able to do it on their own or doesn't have the right equipment to do it, perhaps a, a contractor should, should be brought in. Other uh, units of government run their meetings on Zoom and do it very efficiently, County of Los Angeles, et cetera. If we're not gonna be allowed to attend meetings in person, uh, the city really has to do a much better job of putting the meetings uh, on um, digitally. Uh, the last item I'd like to uh, uh, suggest is that uh, perhaps uh, during the summer when the weather improves and we come out of this COVID-19 shutdown, we establish uh, one night a month where residents can walk the Rio Hondo golf course. That's a wonderful facility that only the golfers right now get to enjoy. and. Uh, I think it could be done late afternoon or early evening where uh, citizens could walk the links. And the first inaugural event could be walk the links at Rio Hondo with the mayor. It'd be a good chance to get uh, citizens out to, to see our golf course uh, without having to uh, drive a golf cart or uh, actually uh, play the links. So it's a resource that's uh, really only utilized by, by golfers. In actuality, it's a park, and it's the largest park in the city, yet uh, very few people get to uh, enjoy the Rio Hondo Golf Thank course. Thank you. Your three minutes are up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please state your name and begin speaking. 
Aló, sí, buenas noches. Sí, buenas noches. Le voy a traducir. Proceda, por favor. Ok, Bu buenas noches. Mi nombre es Bárbara Rodríguez y llevo 10 años viviendo en Downing. Good evening. My name is Bárbara Rodríguez and I have been a resident of Downey for 10 years. Yo estoy hablando para el problema, ¿por qué no ponen en la agenda el control de renta? I am calling to ask why you don't place the rent control on the agenda. Porque hay veces que nos estamos enfocando en otros problemas que no están ayudando a la comunidad, como es el control de renta. Because we sometimes focus on other issues that are not helping the community and not on rent control. Y también estamos, la ciudad supuestamente no tiene dinero para una cosa, pero para otras cosas sí tiene dinero. And the city says that they don't have money for certain things, but then for other things they do have money. Como una de las cosas es que el administrador de la ciudad de Downey. Hello? One of the things is that the city of Downey administrator. Gana más que un senador. De los Estados Unidos. Me Gana más de 300 mil dólares al año. Earns more, uh, the city administrator earns more than a U.S. senator. Um, he makes more than 300 thousand dollars a year. Y hay personas aquí en esta ciudad que están pasando trabajo que no han podido pagar la renta. Y la ciudad no, no los ha ayudado. And there are people here in the community that don't have a job and haven't been able to pay the rent and the city is not helping. Yo quisiera que ustedes me dieran una explicación por qué no han, por qué ustedes no han ayudado a las personas que están necesitadas de renta. I want you to give me an explanation of why you have not helped uh, those community members in need. Y están siempre poniendo el pretexto que no hay dinero y si hay dinero. And you use the excuse that there is no money when there is money. Okay, esto, que tengan buenas noches. And that is all. Have a good evening. Gracias. Uh, Hello, please state your name and begin speaking. Uh, hello, this is uh, Rodolfo from the Downey Tenants Union. I'm a member. Um, so I just want to thank the council for uh, considering uh, all this um, rent control. I think it's very important that uh, tenants have more protections and you know, surrounding cities have done it. Um, so, of course, we can do it in Downey as well. You know, Baldwin Park uh, recently did it. Of course, Los Angeles has had it for a long time, Long Beach, et cetera. So it's going to be wonderful uh, for the council to help the residents, the tenants, uh, current and future uh, in this way. So thank you. Thank you. I'm here. That is all. Thank you. Um, very quickly, I do want to um, apologize to those of you that are watching us via Zoom. Uh, there were a couple of callers that uh, said a number of obscenities. And again, uh, due to uh, First Amendment, uh, unfortunately, we cannot control the language that individuals choose to address uh, this council. Um, this is not uh, the type of dialogue that we like to have with uh, residents and community members. And again, we uh, apologize if those uh, some of those callers were perhaps offensive to some of the some of the individuals watching. Uh, I know it was uh, offensive to me. Um, also, I do want to very quickly uh, address, I know there were some of the callers that indicated the community has not done anything to address uh, the housing needs. And I do want to remind um, our community members that through um, COVID-19 uh, monies and the CARES Act, our city, the city of Downey was able to uh, distribute over $700,000 uh, in 2020. Um, in rental assistance. Now is the time for consent calendar items. Members of the public wishing to address the city council regarding consent calendar items may now call our teleconference line at 562-299-6622. 
For those who submitted comments via email, your comments will be read into the record and no further public comment via teleconference will be permitted. City Clerk Duarte, did we receive any written correspondence to be read into the record regarding consent items? Yes, Mayor, we did. The first one is an email from Priscilla Oropesa. Hello, I am a Downey resident and tenant. The extension of the eviction moratorium for commercial renters and not residential renters, many of whom are facing and did face eviction during this pandemic is unlawful, unethical, and completely classist. I, along with my family who rent in our city, ask for greater tenant protection, regardless or not this selective extension passes. Thank you, Priscilla. Um, and next we have course. Yes, in, um, city clerk, um, I had asked uh, our city attorney to address that specific uh, line item. And that was one of the reasons we did not put it in the agenda. Um, Madam city attorney, would you please speak to that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing uh, several comments about why we're doing something for commercial renters and not residential renters. And um, back in September, I pre prepared a staff report that gave you a summary of a new law, AB 3088. That's a state law that essentially took over the regulation of evictions, rent increases, and um, the conditions upon which renters could e avoid eviction in the future. Um, basically, the state legislature said it needed uniformity amongst all the cities in the state and they needed to have one standard rule that applied to all residential renters. So they adopted AB 3088 um, in September of last year and essentially took that authority away from the cities and set a statewide standard that it basically um, sets the standards for um, residential renters and how they are protected from eviction and how they could avoid um, eviction in the future. Um, that's why there's no residential moratorium any longer in, in the city of Downey. We are now subject to AB 3088. And that is why all we have in terms of authority is to, to regulate and put in a moratorium as it applies to commercial renters. So um, just in a nutshell, uh, AB 3088 essentially says that for the period of March through August, if a renter um, gives the landlord a notice that says they are suffering a COVID-related financial burden or hardship and they cannot pay the rent, they must provide something in writing to the landlord. Once they do that, for that period of unpaid rent from March through August, they are protected from eviction. But starting September 1st, the state law says that in order to avoid eviction, starting with the rent in September, moving forward, that renters have to pay at least 25% of the rent due each month, plus provide a hardship notification to the landlord. In a nutshell, that is the rules statewide and cities can no longer do their own thing with respect to those standards. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Uh, Attorney. So we, again, um, we are, no longer municipalities are no longer able to control the residential moratoriums. We are under That's the right. state law. And that, if, uh, if you just indicated, um, as of September 1st of last year, moving forward, individuals that have been impacted by COVID must pay at least 25% of the rent that is due and provide uh, a COVID-19 type of um, uh, hardship, hardship notification. Yes, and, and now um, I know the, the governor uh, made some announcements uh, early, as of yesterday, yes. and these uh, moratoriums are extended as right. of the end of June. That's correct. Is that correct? Th this rule that was adopted back in September is extended through June 30th. There's a little bit of confusion based on what the governor said and what's in a bill, but it looks like June 30th is the extension cutoff date. 
having said all of that, the city of Downey has utilized other tools to help renters, a renter's assistance program, for instance. Um, those, and, and there are other things that we have done that we have other tools to be able to address the needs of residential renters. But when it comes to these rules about paying rent and eviction, um, we no longer have, the cities no longer have authority to legislate in this area. The state took over that authority from the cities. So all we're left with is regulate, doing our own local regulations for commercial renters. Um, so that's where we're at. Thank you. Thank you, Madam uh, City Attorney. We will uh, more than likely um, have to utilize our social media platforms and uh, provide additional information to our community so that there is no ambiguity and there's no confusion um, in relation to what we at a local level are able to do and where our, our power uh, ends, so to speak, um, in, in the state takes over. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Yes, Council Member Alvarez. Um, can I request for something um, to uh, you and Mother Mayor and uh, Yvette uh, to update or have a declaration letter in our website so the community can upload it and that will be the hardship declaration letter for the landlords because communities sometimes don't have that in handy. So I know there's one specific that uh, it's in general to be given to the landlords. And also, I have heard uh, from the community requesting information about if we still have money to pay or give the assistance to renters. Uh, Council Member Alvarez, we will definitely um, take a look at, at that. Um, we can move forward with uh, the additional callers uh, on the phone, but we will have have uh, staff uh, look into those matters. The, the county has a standard notification hardship letter that they have put on their website. So we'll do, we can do a link to that, okay. that form. So we will, we will do a link that. to the standard letter that the county already has. Uh, and that way they can have that uh, more readily available. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor. City Clerk Guarte, do we have uh, any additional correspondence, excuse me, callers? Uh, yes, Mayor, I actually have uh, one more um, letter to read, and then we have two calls on hold. Um, this letter is from Lee Squire, Vietnam era veteran, civil rights advocate for disabled children. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Subject, consent calendar number seven, extension of urgency ordinance establishing a temporary moratorium on evictions of commercial tenants impacted by COVID-19 pandemic and rent repayment period. The staff report indicates to extend the above period to March 31st, 2021 pursuant to governor's executive order. However, staff report indicates that residential tenants expire January 31st, 2021. Is this still the case or is there a longer period? My concern is for residential tenants who are the parents of children with disabilities and the applicable civil rights towards these children with disabilities. What is the current expiration for residential tenants? I would have been nice to have volunteered this in the staff report. Hello, please take your name and begin speaking. Hello, sir. No, oh, no one's there. Please state your name and begin speaking. Yeah. My name is Leanna Walsh. I remember Captain Larry, nigger, mother, or nigger, and said, and it impacted by COVID 19 and 
1921 pandemic for rent repayment, bitch. Down in California, fucking government food section, 8669, made a mistake, dumb bitch, 8634, fucking down in city charter section, they go to extending niggas temporarily, the depictions commercial tenants for non payment results. And then there's the, 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 the other but the niggas of the county metropolitan in which we all know our nigger transportation food authority measure for mother multi year nigger regional program. These type of grants are racist and they telegraph traffic to a community for safety and the telegraph area enhancement projects as we heard earlier from Mr. Ashton talking about Paramount and racing cars up and down the fucking new streets with the new fucking mediums, you dumb cunt. City manager Mr. Lewis is responsible for the executive agreement, but like a white nigger like Englander. Asking for the FBI to call him and speak to him regarding the 310-477-6565 and also recommend the two Homeland Security look into the 213309803 regarding agenda reports on consent items and they issue the warrants. And my last two seconds. 42 U.S. 1983. Fuck the police. Don't forget the closed caption. Don't forget the closed caption. Don't forget the closed caption. Quack, 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 quack. Quack, 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 quack. Englander, Lompa, 14 months. In a fine, in a fine. Who's next in line? Who's next in line? Bum, 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 bum. Have I utilized all my time, mommy? I got, I got, I got, I got some more time, mommy. Mama, Samantha. Mayor, we have one more call. Please state your name and begin speaking. Rosario Sandoval. Yes, um, good afternoon. Good evening. Um, I, I'm first, I just want to say I do not understand what the other person said on the line. It was very embarrassing. But my concern to me in this city, this community, I've been here for 20 years, and I'm very worried because since last year, Pacheco has been stating that they were going to be wearing control. And then when the pandemic hit, they didn't do anything about it. Pacheco, you said there was rent control. You said we, we were handling the situation and you weren't handling anything until Kathy took over, took over one of that seat. Now you're deciding to make a change. Now you're looking into it. And I think you should be embarrassed by that because it took one of our own to get to where she's at. And I'm very satisfied and I'm very happy. And everybody that stands behind us are very, also very satisfied knowing that there's somebody that's trying to make a change because you and the city attorney is not making a change. So I don't know what or how, how you guys are gonna do this, but you guys need to take care of the situation because that should be a priority. That should be in first on the list. That shouldn't be left to the side. That's something that you guys are playing um, the life from some citizens that are here in Downey, not only in the residents in Downey, but also people that have families, that have people to care to, people that you guys don't know about because you guys don't knock at the doors and ask if they need something from, from the neighbors or anything because we see all that. We see how they suffer. And there's a lot of older people that need so much support that right now they're fighting their life in the hospital. And probably you don't know that, Pacheco. 
and whoever is sitting there in that chair making a smirk because it's not funny. This is not a joke, serious stuff. But that should be first in line. Once you take care of that situation about rain control and what the city attorney said that she's um, not in control. Excuse me, ma'am. We're on consent calendar right now. Um, you need to speak on items related to the consent calendar, not in regards to rent control. Okay. So, see, well, uh, uh, aside to that, they, that there needs to be priority. Aside to that, whatever the situation or whatever kind of uh, changes okay, you guys we're need to gonna make, we're going to disconnect the line be because you need to speak regarding consent calendar items at this time. Okay. Sounds good. Have Thank a good night. you. That is all, Mayor. Is there a motion? Uh, it, are there any council members that would like to remove or abstain from an item? Madam Mayor, I need to abstain uh, from item number four because uh, my home is within close proximity of this project. Okay. Um, Madam Mayor, I have to abstain from uh, number one because I was not a city council member by that time. Thank you. Anybody else? Ma Yes, Madam Mayor, I have to abstain from item number one as I was not a council member on November 24th. So I'll abstain after that part. And I have to abstain from item number seven as I am partial owner of two parcels of commercial real estate in the downtown downing section of the city. Thank you, Council Member uh, Trujillo. Madam Mayor, I do need to abstain from item number four as some of the uh, Parts of the project within, are within a thousand feet of my home. And, and I'd like to pull item number seven for discussion really quick. Would you like me to repeat that, Mayor? Yes, please. Okay, we have uh, Mayor Pro Tem Pacheco abstaining from item number four due to the close proximity to her home. Council member Ashton also abstaining from item number four due to the close proximity to his home. Council member Trujillo abstaining from item number seven due to the close proximity to his place of business. Council member Trujillo and Alvarez both abstaining from item number one meeting minutes of November 24, 2020. <coughs> they were not uh, seated at, as council members at that time. Item, item seven was pulled. And item seven was pulled by council member Ashton for separate discussion. Okay, thank you, city clerk. Is there a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar with uh, item number seven pulled? I'll make that motion. So moved. Okay. Okay, council member Ashton. Uh, you... Mayor, can we yes. take the roll call? Oh, yes. Uh, council member Alvarez? Yes. Council member Ashton? Yes. Council member Trujillo? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Pacheco? Yes. And Mayor Frometa? Yes. Thank you. So since item number seven was pulled for discussion, the discussion will be had with the council, except for uh, council member Trujillo, who's uh, stated on the record his conflict. So he'll just mute since he's joining us virtually, he'll just mute and there'll be the four of you dis discussing and voting on that item. Correct. Council member Ashton, um, go ahead. You have the floor. You wanted to uh, pull item number seven. Excuse me. Yeah, just really quick. I, I like the idea and concept uh, for the most part. I feel that uh, this is something we do need to do for, for uh, commercial residents as well. Uh, the date on there is that the date that it expires is, I believe, March 31st of 2021. I'd like to see if we can extend that to the same date that the state just did for the uh, um, residential uh, voters to uh, June 30th, 2021. That would really be my only change. So the, the March 31st date was taken from the executive order by the governor. The governor gave authority to cities to adopt these kinds of moratoriums for commercial renters but only extended that authority to March 31st. And that's where I got the March 31st, uh, Council Member Ashton. Um, it was just to follow the executive order so that the city doesn't, if we go beyond that, we might become vulnerable for some legal challenge. Um, an argument can be made that we're exceeding our authority under the executive order. So I was just trying to stay within the executive order parameters 
I would expect though that as we get closer to March 31st, that we'll get another executive order from the governor that might push that March 31st date closer to or by the June uh, 30th date, um, as you suggested. Um, it's up to you uh, if you wanna change it to June 30th, you can do so, but there is a legal vulnerability there that I'd like to just point out to you. Thank okay. you, Madam, thank, Madam Attorney. Uh -oh. Thank you for, for bringing ahead. that up then. then that, that's the one thing I, I wasn't quite aware of, but then what I would ask then is I'll, I'll leave it the same. I, I, I'll kind of amend that. But uh, if you can come back to us as you have in the past, but just continue to re, you know, get back to us as far as updates and regarding this as well as the, the, the residential stuff, we, we would greatly appreciate that. Certainly. And with that, if, if there's no other discussion, I'll make the motion to approve. Okay, and I'll make that second. Okay, can we get a roll call, please? Yes, Mayor. Council Member Alvarez? Yes. Council Member Ashton? Yes. Council Member Trujillo? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Abstaining from the yeah. item. Oh, I'm sorry. Abstaining from the item. Council Member abstaining. Trujillo, abstaining from item number seven. Mayor Pro Tem Pacheco? Yes. And Mayor Frometa? Yes. The motion was approved with Council Member Trujillo abstaining from the item. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have some administrative reports. Um, line, num line number nine. Yes, approve the mayor's appointments to the city council standing and ad hoc subcommittees for 2021. Uh, the, this item is the annual appointment by the mayor to the city council standing and ad hoc subcommittees for 2021. I have made my selections to the subcommittees and have recommend and I recommend dissolving certain subcommittees that have completed their tasks and are not, not needed at this time. Uh, we have the Firefighters Memorial Project Subcommittee. As we know that uh, the Firefighters Memorial was already completed. The Rio Hondo Golf Club Subcommittee uh, also um, completed their duties and the 2020 US Census Ad Hoc Subcommittee. I had, I had a question. Uh, in regards to the uh, Rio Hondo Golf Club subcommittee, is that one needed? Or, um, I still remember that we were going to be meeting uh, last year with, with council member, former council member and former mayor Saab. It's um, certainly up to the council if you want to continue it. There, there are a couple of uh, technical items that uh, were discussed by you and council, former council member Saab that we are uh, currently working on and looking at. If you want to continue the committee till such time as those items have been completed, um, you can certainly do that as well. So if it's okay with Madam Mayor, uh, I would like to see if we can continue that one only because I remember mm -hmm. Council Member Saab and I, former Council Member Saab mm -hmm. and I were having some discussions, but unfortunately we weren't able to meet last year because of uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we didn't have, um, so uh, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, then I will have you be, uh, I will have you then lead this subcommittee. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay. Okay, so then the Rio Hondo Golf Club subcommittee will remain. Um, the other two will be, um, will be then uh, eliminated as, those tasks have been completed. On the uh, Rio Hondo subcommittee, you have, uh, who, who are the temp two members? We, we have council member Pacheco and the second. I would like to ask uh, any of the other council members if they are interested in joining Madam uh, Mayor Pro Tem Pacheco in the Rio Hondo Golf Club subcommittee. I'm interested. Okay, Council Member Trujillo, then you will be uh, placed in that subcommittee as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. If there's no other changes, we will um, move forward with that. City Manager, do you have uh, any comments this evening? Um, just a couple of- Sorry, comments. point of order really quick. Uh, we need to vote on that again? Yes. Uh, 
Yes. Yes. We need to take public comment. Yeah. We do. Yes. Okay. Yep. My apologies. We do need to take public comment on this um, before we finalize with the vote. Yes. Um, I will now open this item for public comment. Members of the public wishing to address the council regarding item number nine may now call our teleconference line at 562-299-6622. For those who submitted comments via email, your comments will be read into the record and no further public comment via teleconference will be permitted. City Clerk Duarte, did we receive any written correspondence regarding item number nine to be read into the record? We did not, Mayor. Hey, are there any callers? Uh, yes, we have one call, Mayor. Please state your name and begin speaking. Yes, world famous food critic. And my mommy, Parker. Yes, sir. Item number nine. And Amen. again, thank you very much for giving us and the animal community a chance to comment. Um, let's see here. The Standing Ad Hoc Committee. What are these committees? Why do we need them? When Blanca was mayor, we didn't need any of these. No. She ruled with an iron fist. And that's the way Mommy Blanca made things happen. But Mayor Fometa is running things like a senile. Well, that's what they by me. Oh, yes, yes. But you get the point. You don't. What we need is strong leaders. Like, for example, <laughs> when you're not leader, have the intestinal fortitude to supplement the inventive, creative First Amendment content of language. Isn't it wonderful that people like Herman? And here. AKA term. You're trying to say you don't hear me. So I will duplex in the master goat puppet Downey PC meeting. Yes. Now you can hear me. You can't trick me. I know how you do things. So as we're getting into this, despite all your effort to block. Those with tails and horns, <laughs> we will continue to call in Opine. And once my attorney is out of his disbarment proceeding, initiate litigation to enforce the Brown Act. <laughs> no, actually, he's, that, he's in a mental institution. But again, we will always be here. Put Mommy Blanca Pacheco back in as mayor. She is the only one with the guts, the integrity, and the overall insanity to deal with the city. This city is fucked up. Worse than Los Angeles. Worse than Boston. Worse than New York. That's because you have to leave or lead from behind. You're relying on Janice Hahn. Janice Hahn doesn't know what she's doing. Hahn Time is up, sir. Thank you. Please state your name and begin speaking. Mommy! Can you hear me? Close caption and go so live on YouTube. So we're talking about the administration report on ad hoc. Not like the mayor of hall, but a G E O C ad hoc committees, which sometimes are very unlawful. 
She's as big as ad hoc. But I intend to do all four and not participate. In the ad hoc problems of committees. So let's talk about constitutionality when it comes to permissible limits in the ad hoc call. Are you listening? Let's work with other pro tap ladies. She seems to be very charming tonight in her black little vestibule. Woohoo! 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 I hear a phone ringing. Can you hear me? Is your cold cracking up? Are we at item number nine, the administrative for ad hoc? Who is from that they're going to pick one of those stupid doctors that she had there earlier for a prison station? It makes you wonder how criminals react in the arena when it's often abusive but politically on subject for the first and fourteenth amendment. Let's advocate for it, Downey. Let's punish those who punish the That is all, Mayor. Thank you. Is there a motion in a second to dissolve the Firefighters Memorial Project Subcommittee and the 2020 U.S. Census Ad Hoc uh, Committee? And also to approve the appointment. And we are actually doing two separate motions. Oh, okay. I'll make the mo mo motion to absolve or to absolve the uh, the firefighters memorial and the ad hoc committee for the census. And I'll second that motion. I'll second it. Okay. okay, City Clerk Duarte, would you please take roll? Yes, Mayor. Uh, Council Member Alvarez. Yes. Council Member Ashton. Council Member Trujillo? Yes. Mayor Proton Pacheco? Yes. And Mayor Frometa? Yes. Okay, is there a motion in a second to approve the appointments to the City Council standing and ad hoc subcommittee assignments for 2021? I'll make that motion. I second. I second. City Clerk Duarte, can I have a roll call, please? Yes. Council Member Alvarez? Yes. Council Member Ashton? Yes. Council Member Trujillo? Yes. Mayor Proton Pacheco? Yes. And Mayor Frometa? Yes. Thank you. The motion is approved uh, unanimously. Thank you. Now, City Manager, do you have any comments? Um, Madam, Madam Mayor, just a couple of comments. First of all, I wanted to um, express my gratitude to the staff um, for their hard work during this COVID um, pandemic. They've really sort of doubled the efforts in a lot of areas to make sure that the communities, um, the community gets the services that it certainly deserves. Uh, in particular, I want to thank uh, Vanya, Judy, and Maria, and, and Vanya in particular for coordinating the food drive. Um, that happened last week. So thank you for attending, Madam Mayor. Uh, that always means a lot to see uh, our mayor out there working. And I'm sure the people really appreciated that as well. <clears throat> um, also to, to RAC, to you, you see, coordinates um, a lot of our emergency preparedness and, and presented to you all the things, despite what you may have heard tonight, the, the city is doing a lot in terms of uh, its response, whether it's feeding seniors, doing wellness checks uh, for seniors and feeding families, and in addition, uh, providing rental assistance payments um, to those uh, res residents who, who need them and businesses as well, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, and I say all that in the backdrop with the backdrop of the budget coming up. Um, we're, this is going to be uh, an exceedingly challenging year, given what's happened in, uh, in the economy. And um, Mr. Gandhi will, will, will lead us, I'm sure, through, through the forest again. And uh, we're, we're looking uh, to get that process uh, kicked off here. Um, actually, we, we've been discussing that. As you know, the last meeting, you approved the schedule. So we're in the process of, of, of meeting with department heads and getting 
the uh, appropriate budget set for the council consideration as we move through the budget season. And uh, it will be an interesting time this year, um, but I will assure you that we will uh, present to you something that I think that we will um, get us through the other side of this uh, pandemic. So we'll work hard with you to get, uh, to get us there. So thank you very much. And uh, I appreciate you giving um, the staff an opportunity to, to work with you all to make sure that we serve our residents. Thank you. Thank you, city manager. Now we uh, are going to adjourn in memory of the following. Um, and we have a long list tonight. Um, our communities continue to um, suffer very much uh, with the loss of many individuals uh, due to COVID. And uh, again, uh, while the state, um, our governor has moved us uh, to, uh, has lifted the stay at home order, um, we are cognizant that we are still very much impacted. Um, and from a healthcare perspective, um, that continues to ring very true. And uh, our council meetings will continue uh, to be close to the public um, because of the safety measures that we need to continue to maintain uh, to protect our community, but also to protect each other. Um, and again, uh, we will adjourn in memory of the following. Law enforcement personnel who lost their battle with COVID-19, Sergeant Emilia Terry Martinez, LAPD, Lieutenant John Reynolds, Garden Grove Police Department, Corrections Officers, Jose Alfredo Tiramos, Joey Cates, Daniel Lopez Mendoza III, Sergeant Gilbert Polanco, California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, Gloria Espinosa, longtime Downey resident, Joey Lizarde, Downey resident, and all the lives that we've lost due to COVID-19. A moment of silence, please. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>